Hi folks, I'm Chris Marshall with Woodworkers Journal Magazine. If you use your table saw to cut down full-size sheet goods, you already know what the challenges are. These 4x8 sheets are heavy to lift, and they're bulky to send across your table saw, especially if you're trying to guide them along the rip fence. And unless you have a good form of outfeed support behind your saw, or you work with a helper, the process can be downright dangerous. Or maybe you use an ordinary circular saw to cut up your sheet materials, and they certainly work, but it's tough to get a dead-on straight cut unless you're working against a good clamped straight edge, and if you don't have a quality blade in your saw, it can leave a splintery or chipped out mess along the cut edge. Now, I'm sure you'll agree with me that if we're spending $60 or more for quality plywood, that's waste we just don't want to afford. That's why I'm a big fan of today's plunge cut track saws. Right out of the box, any of these saws with their standard blades will exceed the performance capabilities of a standard circular saw, and they'll make any cut that a standard circular saw can do. Rip cuts, cross cuts, bevel cuts, miter cuts, plus plunge cutting. Now, Festool has been leading the way in track saws for many, many years, but Clearly the category has grown. That's why on our October 2014 print issue, I'll be putting six of these track saws into a head-to-head -head test to see which saws come out on top. But maybe you've never had an opportunity to use a track saw before. Well, in this short video, I'll show you how easy it is to set up and use these saws to make a standard cut, and then point out some of the saw's other special features. Now the beauty of a track saw really is its simplicity. It does exactly what you think it's going to do. Essentially, it's a circular saw with a shrouded blade that follows a metal rail for making straight cuts. All track saws have options for aluminum rails that range anywhere from 55 inches up to about 63 inches in length, but you can get shorter or longer rails too, depending upon your application. The saws are easy to set up and use. There's a depth of cut scale in the front of the tool, with a locking device to set the plunge depth. And plunging the saw is easy. There's a release lever above the trigger, and depressing that release lever allows the blade to pivot down and into your workpiece. It also acts as a safety for the trigger in a lockout fashion. Now on the bottom of the saw, there's a groove, and that fits into a channel on the track. So, set the saw in place on its track, squeeze the release lever and the trigger, plunge it down in, and it slides right along the edge of the rail. Couldn't be easier. The bottom of these rails also have two rubber strips, and that helps uh, give you a positive friction fit on your workpiece. And even more importantly, there's a rubber strip along the edge of the rail and that tracks the blade as you're making a cut to support the wood in, right in the area where the blade comes up and out of the workpiece to help minimize splintering and chip out. So, all that said, let's go ahead and make a cut. So here's how easy it is. I've drawn tick marks on either edge of my plywood workpiece, and that's exactly where I'm going to place the rubber edge of my guide rail. Now all I have to do is start the saw and make the cut. It's simple, it's dead on accurate, and it's easy to do. In my opinion, this is the way to work with sheet materials. On the floor, on your workbench, on sawhorses, moving the saw over the sheet instead of the sheet over the saw, particularly when they're full 4x8 sheets. Now I'd like to point out a few of the special features that are unique to track saws, and the first of them is dust collection. All track saws have a port on the guard that accepts a 35 millimeter dust extractor hose. That's not a standard shop vacuum, it's a dedicated dust extractor that's intended for high efficiency tools like this. But if, uh, if you're working in a client's finished space or if you've got a sensitivity to dust or 
Uh, if you work in a basement shop and you don't have great ventilation, dust collection can make a huge difference in terms of the, uh, the pleasantness of using the tool. Now what I've done here is I've made a rip cut on this sheet of plywood with a standard circular saw. Of course there's no dust collection capabilities with a standard saw and I've just left the dust on the floor. Um, you can see it there and that says nothing for the amount of dust that still might be floating around in the air. But now I'm going to make a rip cut with this uh, Festool track saw so you can see the difference dust extraction can make. Sure, it's pretty easy to see the difference. The dust extractor starts when the tool starts, shuts off uh, shortly after the tool finishes spinning, and uh, contains almost all the dust the tool produces. Another feature to look for in a track saw is scoring capability. Essentially, the saw has a setting on it that limits the depth of cut to about two or three millimeters. So you can make just a light scoring pass through the top of your workpiece. The advantage there is pretty straightforward. If the top layer is already cut, when you go back to make a through cut, the teeth rising up through the cut won't have a tendency to chip or splinter that top layer. Not all track saws have a scoring feature, uh, but it's a handy feature uh, for those that do. A few of these saws also have riving knives, such as this DeWalt. You can see it right behind the blade here, it's spring-loaded. And it serves exactly the same purpose as the riving knife on today's table saws. If you're cutting solid wood, the riving knife prevents the wood from closing up and pinching the blade on the backside, which could cause the saw to kick back on you mid-cut. So if you're planning on doing a lot of ripping of solid lumber with your track saw, look for a track saw that's got a riving knife. Finally, a few thoughts about tracks. Clearly, tracks are what bring accuracy to a plunge cut saw. And as I mentioned, manufacturers offer them in a variety of lengths, but you don't need every size. Since the tracks have channels in them, manufacturers offer connector bars with screws so you can attach tracks end for end. So you could start with one 55 inch length of track for making cross cuts in plywood, and then eventually buy a second track, which you can attach end for end, to the first track, and now you've got more than eight feet of length for making long cuts in plywood too. All the manufacturers have specialized quick grip style clamps with a special bar on the end that also fits into that track channel. So you can clamp your track down to your workpiece or your workbench to immobilize everything while you're making a cut. So whether you need a better solution for cutting up expensive sheet materials ripping and cross-cutting solid lumber, or just as a portable solution for your table saw, the next time you're in the market for a circular saw, give this category of track saws a closer look. Their dust collection capabilities, accuracy, and state-of-the-art features have made a believer out of me. And make sure and read our October 2014 tool test to find out which of these saws earned our best bet awards. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Oh, <laughs>